Yes, C4FM does have a call frequency. Stay tuned and we'll talk about it here on the Fusion Elmer Guy. Well, howdy. I'm glad you joined us uh, today. We're going to talk about the uh, C4FM call frequency. Like all the other uh, call frequencies that we have uh, over the years, if you're not aware of it, I know call frequencies aren't used that much uh, as they were back in the early days. But it would be a simplex frequency that people would monitor. And on FM for two meters, that was uh, 146.520. Um, on sideband for two meters, that was 144.200. Now, on sideband, that's still used um, it, it, quite a bit. And um, on FM, though, we have so many repeaters that people are opting just to monitor a repeater rather than a call frequency, which makes it kind of tough if you're traveling, you're going from one town to another town, and so on and so on, and it trips in, be, you know, towns in between those uh, locations. You don't know what the repeater frequencies are. Yes, you could look it up in a repeater book, and nowadays it's all on a uh, computer, uh, but it's still inconvenient if you're driving. So to have 146.520 in your radio already programmed as a call frequency just means you push the button, and you should be able to put a call out there and, and somebody should be able to respond. That just doesn't happen that much anymore. There's not that many people that actually monitor uh, those call frequencies. Uh, now, if you're looking for doing uh, DXing and stuff on sideband, you probably do, and that's the thing. Um, so what we would like to do is establish a, um, a call frequency for C4FM. And uh, what we have uh, set up was a call frequency of uh, 145.56250. And so this would be a, a frequency you'd put in your radio and have your radio scan that along with any of your um, um, repeaters that you listen to. And, um, you know, if you're using your radio right, you got it set up right, it'll switch back and forth between digital and FM and stuff like that. So um, what we're suggesting to do is putting it in your radio memory bank uh, for a call frequency. Um, we use it uh, with no uh, DGID uh, coding. So the DGID transmit would be zero, zero, and receive would be zero, zero. Now, you're looking at that number, 145.56250. Now, I'm going to tell you, you're thinking to yourself, man, that's not going to fit on the screen. I mean, there's just no way, uh, you know, that you can put that in your radio. Well, trust me, my friends, you can. So, at this point, why don't you grab your radio? I'm going to be using the FT3D uh, uh, to demonstrate to you. And um, I'll go through the procedure that you need to go through in order to do this. You may have already run into a similar problem to where you've had frequencies that you've tried to put into your radio and you can't put them in. So we're going to walk through this. And I'm going to go slow enough so that you can understand. One of the things that gripes me on a video is somebody wants to cram four hours worth of stuff into five minutes and they speed through everything and as a YouTube user <laughs> I find it really really tough to deal with that I get frustrated so we will go through this slowly and you should be able to follow along and I will say stop the you know pause the picture you know pause the video there if you if if I'm getting too fast and too far ahead of you, but I'm going to try to go slow enough so you won't have to do this. So uh, at this point, we will be going over and taking a look at the radio. Um, so we've got the radio sitting right there. I actually have the frequency in there that, as far as you can go, that's as far. If you try to put that frequency in, that is as far as you're going with it. <clears throat> it's not. It's not going to go any further. 
because of the, um, the, the way it's set up. So you have to go in and make some changes. One of the changes I'm gonna make right now is changing this camera so that it doesn't flop over and give us a chance to do this. Okay, so one of the big issues is you've got to be able to, to change this. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna hit the display button. So you wanna press and hold. Please press and hold the display button until it beeps and changes. I already have it marked. So you wanna hit configure. So you'll hit the convict here, and you'll want to go up and down the menu, but under the configure figure menu, you want to go to step. So when you hit step, you tap the screen, and you see when it comes, your radio defaults to auto. Auto is the problem. It, it, it's trying to think for you, and it doesn't understand what you're trying to accomplish. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and tap auto. Well, we're going to hit display then. Oh, okay. I've, I've already did it. So we have to change this. We're going to change this to 6.25. So we were at auto. We're going to change it. Click, click with the top button up here. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm turning the top button. So you want to change it to 6.25. Now, at that point, you're going to back out. Now, while we're here, let's just make a change to what this is going to be. This is going to be a simplex frequency. So we want to go up here uh, to um, repeater uh, shift. Tap the screen, and we want to change it from wherever it might have been, because it could have been repeater plus, negative, but we want to go to simplex. So when we store this, we want this to be stored in the simplex mode. Hit back. Now, I think we pretty well covered everything we need to cover while we're here. So we're going to go ahead and back one more time and one more time. Now remember we said we're going to be using DGID 0000. So to do that, just to make sure that you're, you've got it there, you're going to hit the GM button, but you press and hold. Press and hold the GM button. Now you've got your DGID codes come up. Now you would select whichever one you needed to change, and then you would tap the the screen or whatever, and uh, I see the display button, I guess. Well, I forgot which one you tap here. Oh, DJID, or the group mode, press that. And then you would change to whatever DJID code that you needed to change to. In this case, we're going to be changing to zero, zero. So now we're going to tap um, back, back. Now, tap the screen, type in one, four, five, five, six, two, and guess what, folks? There it is. You are ready to go on the air simplex with that new frequency. Now, you notice we're still in VFO, so you need to press and and hold the uh, right button down here and select a memory and put it in. I'm not going to do that. I already have it in my radio. But that's your next procedure to store that and get that uh, going to where, um, where we need it. Now, get back on this camera by itself. So now the next thing is how do we use this? We've got to set in the radio. Now you can put this in your group of scanned frequencies so that that gets scanned along with everything else you're listening to. And there's another nice feature on these, uh, and it's the only feature, only time I've seen it is on the new FT3. It's called CAM. We're going to talk about that in another video. But if you want to get a head start on this, 
look up the CAM feature, C-A-M, and you will uh, find something pretty amazing. Uh, I think it's pretty awesome. I wish all the radios had it, but uh, the FT3 had it, and I was expecting the FT-M300 uh, to have it. Didn't, didn't happen. Didn't happen. So, anyway. So, what you'd want to do is uh, monitor this frequency as much as you possibly can, um, and this way, as people are passing through town and they use this frequency, you'll hear them and be able to go back to them and direct them to the, uh, the local C4FM uh, repeater. Now, the DR2s, again, this is something for another, another talk, but um, now let's put it this way. I have on my repeater... I actually have a link radio, if you will, uh, set for this frequency in digital so that if somebody is passing along the freeway here and they're using this uh, or put a call out in, anywhere along the line, that they would, my repeater would pick them up. Now, we wouldn't be able to talk to them, but we would be able to know they were there. And then move over to the uh, uh, simplex uh, c4 fm frequency and talk to them and direct them to the to the repeater uh, there's a number there's so many awesome things you can do with this digital stuff it's just like it's like oh another way we can do it <laughs> we can do this <laughs> but right now with this this is what we what uh, what you can do is get back and talk to them get them directed to the the repeater, which will carry them a lot further than, uh, you know, 16 miles from your house, let's say, <laughs> or whatever the case may be. Um, so I hope this has been helpful to you, um, that you can get uh, not only this frequency programmed into your radio, but now you uh, understand the step feature, um, and uh, you can make use of this. Now, each one of these radios has this. I mean, the the uh, FT1, uh, 2, and 3, the FTM uh, 100, 300, 400, the uh, FT991 and the 991 Alpha, they all have this step feature. In fact, most modern radio do have this because of that situation. So it doesn't make any difference whether you're using an ICOM, Yaesu, uh, Kenwood, or whatever. You can go in and Put that, change that step feature, and that will allow you to put those frequencies in. Back in the old days, they had a, a button that you could push and that would change your step uh, so that you could do this. Uh, but we're not back in the old days. <laughs> so, um, but again, hopefully this has been helpful. Um, if you uh, are listening to this and you are actually in the uh, Auburn, Grass Valley I'm, I'm in Gold Run in this area. Uh, stop by the repeater. Say hi. Uh, if you're in Auburn area, you can actually uh, link that repeater to the Gold Run repeater by changing your DGID code uh, when you're using the uh, digital repeater there. Change your DGID code to uh, 02 on transmit only. And uh, it just ties uh, the two repeaters together.